If you like Star Trek and Star Wars and you like ship battles, you'll like this channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe and make a comment. It helps. It really does. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so today's video, we're going to be taking a look at mega phasers, right? Because mega phasers are megally awesome. So right off the bat, I'm going to be using an analysis based on the Star Trek Starfleet uh, reference manual ships of the fleet volume one. And so I will take that information from here and then I'm going to calculate what the power is in the book and then translate it into a formula that we use that I use for my calculations. Now, right off the bat, these things are all in watts. And we know that the formulas that we see in Star Trek, the actual real formulas are terawatts. So there is a huge discrepancy there. And so we will do some accommodations for that. So we'll go ahead and we'll use the uh, Swifton class, which is an interceptor. And then we're going to be cross-referencing other interceptors because I just find this to be interesting. So I figured this is a ship you guys probably have never seen before, and it'll be a little interesting to learn about it. And it's mega phasers. Okay, so we'll take a look at the Swiftin. So you can see that with the Swiftin is based off the design that we see with the Enterprise A Rift. And it uses some of the same components and technology. So a lot of the weaponry on this ship is, is honestly identical to the Enterprise A. It has one full-ton torpedo. It has two warp nacelles. But the big difference between this ship is it's carrying on top of it two mega phasers. So the question is, why use mega phasers? What do mega phasers do? How strong are they? And why would you have mega phasers instead of regular phasers? And then if they are better, why doesn't the Federation use it on all their ships? And we're going to answer all these questions. All right, so let's take a look at our mega phasers. So our mega phasers output is 2.6 times 10 to the 12th in watts. Okay, the range is 1.0 times 10 to the 6 kilometers, and the rate of fire is 15 ppm. So now let's take a look at the Type 7 phasers. You can see the output is 5.0 times 10 to the 11th power watts, and you can see the range is 2.5 times 10 to the 5th kilometers. And you can see the fire rate is 30 ppm. So right off the bat, we can see it has double the fire rate, and you can see that it has only a portion of the firepower. Now, we're going to take in consideration some things that this is the standard weapon seen on all Federation starships. So this is the weapon that was used against the Miranda, and this is the Captain Kirk himself starship using Type 7 phasers. So let's take an analysis of this weapon. All right, so now let's break it down. Let's look at our formulas. So let's make it easier. So the Type 7 phaser has a volley of 30, and it has a whopping 5 billion watts of power per blast. Now you times that by 30, and you will get 15 trillion watts. Now we'll take a look at the Mega Phaser. So the Mega Phaser has a volley of 15. It has 2.6 trillion watts per shot for a total of 39 trillion watts with a full barrage of 15 shots. Wow, that is a lot of power. All right, so with that being said, let's kind of break this down. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we can figure out. So let's take a look at what those Type 7 phases are looking like. And let's compare them to our old formulas and see if there's that much of a difference. Computer, please convert data table. Okay, so now that we converted it to the formulas that we use on screen, the terawatt formula, we know that the Type 7 phaser is 2,800 and it can shoot 20 times. And so it gives us 56,000 terawatts. Now, if we were to take the manual that we see and it says it can shoot 30, then that would change it to 84,000. So let's do the exact same thing they did with the Type 7 phaser and let's compare the analysis using the mega phasers. 
All right, so then we look at the mega phasers from our original analysis of 16,000 terawatts or 16,250 terawatts. It can shoot four times for 65,000. It said it's supposed to be equal to, as what original or other data was saying, to a full-ton torpedo of the time period. Now we look at mega phasers based on the formula that we see there. It can shoot 15 times, and it actually has a value of 14,560. So that will equal 218,400 terawatts from the manual. So now the question is, is how did I get these numbers? Okay, so here's our comparison between the mega phasers and the type seven phasers. So if you break the formulas down that you saw in the very, very, very beginning in those magazines, uh, so the mega phasers is 5.2 times stronger than a type seven phaser. So whatever a type seven phaser is, you're going to times it by 5.2 and then that is going to be the answer to what your mega phaser is. So if you have a different formula, feel free to use that, and then you can translate it. So just so you guys know, I had to do this multiple times because my phone was giving me different answers every time I was asking it to run these formulas. So then I had to break them down and do it myself. I just want you guys to know that this is how much I love you guys. All right, so then you compare, obviously, the firepower to the rate of fire, and then overall, it's 2.6 times stronger with the mega phasers are. Now, if you convert the gigawatt formula, remember, 2,800 times 5.2 equals 14,560. So that's how strong our mega phaser is. And so if we take that formula to our other formulas that we've seen before, remember, the type 7 phaser is 2,800. It can fire 20 times for 56,000. Now, everything that says manual next to it means it's coming from the manual and using the, you know, the PPF formula. So 2,800, you times that by 30, and then it's 84,000. So the manual says that it could shoot 30 times instead of 20 is what we see on screen. Now, the mega phasers are shooting for 16,250, and they shoot four times. And that's what our show shows us. But the manual says, get this, 14,560. So it's slightly weaker, but it could shoot 15 times. So that would be 218,400. That is a lot of firepower for a ship of that time period. That is mega awesome, mega badass. All right, so now as I look at the SWIFT and class of its line and I start comparing the data tables and I start asking myself, well, if these weapons are so strong, why were more Federation ships not using them? That's the question. And as I look through the data tables and I'm trying to figure out an answer, I wasn't able to figure it out until I paid close attention to some of the other subsystems. And then I realized, wait a minute, there is a big drawback to this weapon it affects the warp drive. And it doesn't just affect the warp drive, it affects the warp drive significantly. So as I was running this analysis, trying to figure out what could be going on with this, I realized, oh my gosh, I missed this. Check this out. Look at the Mega Phaser ship. So when you take a look at it, you can see, look at optimal speed. So this would be the optimal cruising speed your ship is going to operate. Standard ship is running at warp 6. The ship with the mega phasers, the exact same ship, has warp 4. Then you look at the max safe cruising speed of warp 8. It drops down to warp 7. And then the emergency speed, warp 9, warp 9. And you can see that your standard cruising speeds are greatly affected. So how is this happening? Well, it's because these newer generation ships use these more powerful weapons. The weapons are directly integrated into the warp core itself. Okay, so that's the reason. It greatly affects the ship's performance at warp. So it's going to cause a lot of antimatter use. It's going to make the ship less efficient at warp speeds. It's going to make you move slower. And then there's also another issue there is a tendency for the mega phasers to explode and this is why they are not inside the hull of the ship and why are they are located outside the hull of the ship and they are on like beams and bars is because you have to be able to push them out in the space away from the ship if they start to overload so we have two problems 
number one, they can explode when they're using. They're dangerous. They're a high-impact, versatile weapon, but they're dangerous to use. It's a new technology. The other part is, is it affects the ship itself at warp. And that is the number one reason why you don't see that many ships carrying mega phasers. If a ship is carrying mega phasers, <clears throat> they plan for combat. And they plan for more of a defensive combat. All right, so I started looking over all the different stats. And so let's take, for example, the Constitution and then look at the Constitution Commander class, right? The Commander class at the very top there has got mega phasers. Now, what do we notice? We see warp performance drops, and then we see also shield recharge rates drop significantly. So, for an example, Enterprise has a recharge rate of around 9. Now, its counterpart, the command with the mega phasers, is around 5.6 or somewhere around that. So, it's losing around half of its shield um, regeneration rates. Now, the shields themselves were around the same. But you do see that drop in performance with the warp engine, and then it also affects the shield recharge rates. So, when you're in a combat situation, if an enemy is coming into enemy space and you want to be able to hit those targets with a lot of firepower, that's the weapon you want. Now, if you're in deep space and you are going to engage enemy ships, you probably don't want the mega phasers because if you're out exploring like the enterprise this is going to hinder you a lot okay so this is why deep space ships or deep space combat ships are not using these weapons is because you're going to be very slow and then your refreshment rate on your shields are going to be bad so you don't want those things where you're in deep space where you're alone and you're on your own those things are deadly your speed is your most important attribute, and then next would be your shields keeping you alive. Now, if you're in a combat situation and you have a couple hundred points of more sustained power on your shield, that's great. But when you have a refreshment rate of those shields that are going down in combat and they're regenerating nine times faster than your opposing ship, then that is a big asset to a single ship combat and that's kind of like what's happening with the enterprise and ships like that and the clean on d7 they're engaging at deep space and they're typically not fighting you know big fleets they're fighting one-on-one -on -one battles you know because space is huge and these things are exploring in the middle of nowhere so they're not in giant fleet battles because most of those mega phasers when you look at what it says it says that those are for supporting fleets so they're they're really almost never on their own they're there to support other ships, like other would say, if there is an engagement where you need to get into and you need to hit a hostile area, yeah, you could go in there, you can have the Constitution class go in with you, and then you can have a couple of these, you know, uh, interceptors with you, and then you're going to get a lot of punch for a small ship if you bring that in. So what's the, what's the limit, though? Well, the fleet's going to have to travel at slower speeds to get to the target on time. So that's why those weapons are not really seen on these ships. And that makes perfect sense when you think about it, what it's doing. So now let's look at everything from a Starfleet perspective. All right, so we're going to take a look at so many different ship classes. And then let's look at the big picture and let's see what's going on here. All right, so if we convert some of those things to our original formulas, uh, and you can see how much damage potential some of these ships have you can see that the ships that have the mega phasers that this is putting them very high on the defensive capability now you look at that middle section there you know where you see like where it says most ships are using two torpedoes and tubes and stuff you can see that uh, they're they're using that's that's a pretty standard federation ship most ships are using two torpedoes and then they're using you know anywhere between 18 to 14 phasers that's like a common starship but you can see these mega phasers are really really pushing you to those uh next levels so okay so now let's too bad you can't see the names i'm sorry about that 
All right, so hopefully you guys can see this. I don't know how <clears throat> obvious it is for you, for me and my screen. Creating the video, it's extremely small, so it's hard for me to read this. But okay, so we can let's go look at something that has mega phasers. So you can see that the fast destroyer has a refresh rate of 1.23. You can see that's really low. It see its shields are 479,700, and then if you go down towards uh, the, the Enterprise is called a heavy cruiser. So, shield index is a one. Refreshment, you see how high that is? 9.54. You go over 390,000. So, it's got lesser shields, but the refreshment rate is outrageous. Now, let's look at these ships here that have the mega phasers. So, most of those ships have a slightly decreased refreshment rate the only one that's not like that is it looks like there's a a frigate with so it looks like there's a federation frigate that has a really high refreshment rate and then you look at the heavy frigate that's what you would think that's what the reliant is you know from the star trek movie so you can see it's got better shields but you see it's uh refreshment rate is 7.97 .97. so it's actually uh, lower, quite a bit lower than the Enterprise, but the the heavy frigate is designed for deep space heavy combat. That's one of the only exceptions to this kind of rule. But for the most part, you can see, like for an example, the fast destroyer. Uh, let's look at this. The, let's look at the command cruiser. See that that's a good example. So the command cruiser is really identical to the heavy cruiser except for it's got a mega phaser, right? And you can see it have that big decrease. And then if you look at like the cruiser and the dreadnought, you know, those things are, are using lots and lots of, you know, type seven phasers. You can see that really high refreshment rates. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing to look at. Now, I mean, if you look at like the most dangerous ship on here is the PT destroyer, which is a torpedo frigate. So it's got a really crappy refreshment rate. Um, its shields are good. I mean, it's well. I mean, they're they're average. They're, they're above. A well, no, they're not. They're they're slightly better than the Enterprise. So they're 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 not that great, honestly. But anyways, uh, it's got so many torpedoes though that it's just absolutely delivering an incredible amount of damage. Look at that, eight torpedoes, and it's like it's in the five hundred and fifty three thousand range. And you look at these other ships, there's nowhere that really comes close to that. Now, this this attack uh, frigate is uh, pretty interesting. So it's got 16 phasers, or no, weapon plasma at 16, 12 phasers, two... Oh, wait, I'm losing track. So it's so hard to look at this, guys. Yeah, so I had to pause it to kind of look at it. So yeah, so my my statement or my analysis does seem to stand correct. If you you look at the the ships that hold the mega phasers, they typically have a decrease in ship refreshment rate. So uh, I mean, the only difference is that heavy frigate. It, it I mean, seven point nine two is it's that's a really high uh, ref refreshment rate for a ship. That uh, the the Reliant or Reliant, however you want to say it. That is a really powerful ship. So it kind of makes a sense why you saw so many of them and why they're doing internal duties and they lasted as long as they did is because that frame has got good refreshment rate. It's got a lot of offensive capabilities. It's slow. Like, I'll admit that. It is slow. It's even crappier than the other ships that we looked at. But um, 4, 6, and 8, I think, is what the numbers are. It, it's It's... It's not very it's not very good when it comes to speed, but you know it's making up for it with its other features. So I mean, you look at this thing; it's got a optimal speed of warp four, a max safe cruising speed of six point two, and then an emergency speed of eight point four. So it's pretty sh pretty crappy when it comes to speed, but besides that, it's just getting an A in everything else. All right, so what did we learn about mega phasers? Well, we learned that mega phasers are kind of a double-edged sword. So you are going to hit way above your weight class. But 
you cannot take a hit and you're slow getting there. So if you're in a fight and you got ships that have mega phases on them, they are going to be your primary target to take out because they are going to hit hard, but they can't take a hit and they're slow going. So you're not going to be able to count on these guys to get to the fight on time, but when they do get there, they're going to hit hard, but they're not going to be able to hit hard for very long. So I can definitely see how Mega Phasers really didn't catch on because speed is absolutely a necessity. And then refreshment rate is pretty important too. Um, I If I was building a fleet, and I would probably not build ships with Mega Phasers on them. Uh, based on the stats that I see, uh, they're cool. Now, obviously, it's a newer technology. Maybe the Relant is kind of the exception. Maybe it's kind of got the uh, bugs fixed, and that's why it doesn't suffer as much. But it's still slow. So that's what I learned about Mega Phasers. I hope you guys have uh, learned something new. I hope you guys liked everything that I shared with you. I would care to see what's your opinion about Mega Phasers. I think Mega Phasers are a really cool, powerful weapon, but I am personally don't think that they're the most effective weapon. If you were in charge of Starfleet, would you be putting Mega Phasers on your ships or not? <laughs>